Hi, my name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works. And in today's video, we're going to focus on packaging up a Power App solution for distribution to another environment or to another customer. So stay tuned. There are two ways of packaging up an application for movement to another, env another environment or maybe to an external customer. One is by exporting and importing applications, and the other one is by building a Power App solution. In this video, we're going to focus on the latter of solutions. And the main reason that you might choose a solution versus the other is it packages up a lot of the CDS entities uh, and a lot of the other pieces that Power Apps uh, export imports do not do. So in this video, we're going to focus on creating a quick solution, exporting it out, and then importing it into another environment. So let's take a look at what we can do now. So what I have inside of make.powerapps.com is a simple environment. I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new solution, but you can see a list of other solutions. Most of them are system solutions right here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new solution now. We'll give it a good name. We'll call this just a webinar. Now, for the publisher, this is an important piece here. This is where all the CDS entities that you're going to put in the solution, common data services entities, will have a certain prefix behind them. And typically speaking, when you're building a CDS solution and applications inside of Power Apps, you're going to want to always build solutions first and add to the solution as you're doing that. So build, starting with a solution and adding all the components from that solution instead of doing it after the fact. You'll notice up top here, we can actually do that after the fact. In a moment, you'll see uh, add existing apps and add existing components or add a new component. So a publisher in our case, I'm going to create a new publisher. You can kind of see what, what this does. And I'll just call this uh, webinar. And then we'll put a prefix of just uh, WB for short. Now, by doing that, now every entity we create and every option set and other things will have WB in front of it. Now, by doing that also, it prevents collisions. So you want to make sure that prefix is something unique to your company. Like for pragmatic works, we use PRAG because we feel nobody's going to likely have that. Now, it will also give you a prefix on all your option sets as well. So there's no collisions there as well. And it will give you things like uh, uh, you'll be able to find it later. So you can put all the company information inside there so you can find it easily uh, from somebody that's imp imp importing the solution later. We'll go ahead and save and close this now. And we'll now have, we'll now have a publisher in here called Webinar. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and hit Create. Again, this video is a starter video. There's a lot more we can do inside of this, but let's just start with the, the basics and we'll have future videos covering how we can do some more of the advanced things like environment variables and all those kind of goodies. But let's go back into our next piece and let's add a new entity. Now notice we can also create existing entities here as well and existing dialog boxes, existing processes and UI flows and all sorts of stuff inside of here can be created as well as on the other pane, you'll have option sets and all those as well. But in our case, we're going to create a new entity and we're going to start inside of a solution so it has all the proper prefixes and everything's all packaged up properly. All right, we'll call this just a webinar and we'll just give this just, a, yeah, okay, I'll stick with the default here because I'm actually going to use this outside of this uh, webinar and I'll create a quick field here. I'll create this field just a sample option set. Again, this is just going to be a quick, uh, a quick one here. Okay, and then on the bottom here, we'll go ahead and just make this an option set. Okay, and we'll call this, we'll create a brand new one here as well. We'll call it a sample option set. That's fine. And it'll have, you know, a value of hello, and then maybe an other option called world. And there's a reason why I'm doing this, just to kind of show you how options sets are packaged up also. All right, so we have two, uh, one option set, one field really, and then a whole bunch of plumbing fields from CDS also. All right, so this one's now done. We'll go ahead and save this entity. And you may have noticed here, but when I hit the add button again, once this comes back here, I'll hit this add button again and look at the prefixes here, WB underscore. So that's, that's what I mean by everything has that prefix to prevent collisions. Now, once you're operating inside the solution, you want to kind of stay inside the solution. So in other words, I'm going to create every new thing by clicking on this webinar piece right here. And you'll see there's my option set right there. There's my entity right there. And then anything else I add, like for example, my application, 
I can also add from here as well. So I'll, quick, I'll create a quick, um, um, let's just do a quick uh, phone form application just to kind of show how we can do this. And this, this application is not going to do a whole lot. Again, it's going to be a CDS application. So that's the real power of CDS is kind of packaging all this up. So once we've done this, you'll notice in the back screen here it's saying it's waiting for us to actually finish up creating this. So I'll go ahead and just drop a quick gallery in so we can create some dependencies. And I'll use that entity we just created, all right, which was called, I think it was called Webinar. There it is. Here we go. Okay, good enough. And we'll go ahead and save and close this. Save and close. So now that that's done, well, it's almost done here, uh, there's a few more things we'll, we'll go ahead and do next. So we've got everything ready to go. We have an application that does absolutely nothing. We have an entity that actually does absolutely does nothing. I'll hop back over here and I'll hit done and you'll see my app right here. It's, that's appropriately named app. Uh, we probably should go ahead and rename that, but you get the idea. Now we'll do all of our edits from here. We don't have to do it from here, but we can. We wanna do our edits from here and all that just to get the habit of doing it. We can also go up here and we can add existing apps as well. So if I already had an application, we can add that here as well. There's one more piece we'll cover in a later video, and that's environment variables. Environment variables allow you to package things up. I'm just going to create a new environment variable just for kicks here. And I can package things up uh, like what color do you want to use in the application, perhaps? What is the app ID? What is, you know, all these kind of things you can package up so when somebody receives this solution, they have a configuration, essentially a config, config file, where they can make changes to it without having to go and code the application. All right, so we have a very simple loose solution, one table, one option set, one application. Let's package this up now for delivery. So to do that, we'll go ahead and hit the export button. We'll go ahead and publish all the changes to make sure everything's now live and intact. In our case, everything's published. We're on version one of the app, so everything is kind of already out there. But we'll do a quick, a quick publish just to make sure everything's good, and I get in the habit of doing that just to make sure. That, all, that, that, that same option is up here as well, publish all customizations. So this is publishing your app. It's getting your your um, your things like your model driven applications published. So it's, you're all looking at the proper version. We could also run uh, a check for issues. We're not gonna do that right now because it could take a few minutes sometimes. And then we'll hit next. Now this is the important decision you have to make when you talk when it comes to applications and and publishing it here. This is for solutions only. This is one of the powerful things of solutions. First of all, what version of the app are you going to do? So I'll typically put my version number right here. This is, this is my incremental and it automatically increments this. But one of the things I like to do is I like to put the date inside of this. So I'll, I'll just call this, I have no idea what, what the day even is. I think it's 6, uh, 13, and 2020, I don't know. It's something like that. Uh, I'll just do 20, just for a tougher shortcut here. So we'll have a, a timestamp inside of here, a major, a minor, a timestamp, and then a, 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 a patch number inside of this. So every time you export again, the next time we'll also have version two built into it, version three, and so on for what I have highlighted right now. So it's kind of a handy way. Now there's one key area to keep in mind is managed versus unmanaged solution. So the managed solution allows you to package things up in a nice way to where you say, I don't want anybody that's out of this environment to make major changes to the applications, like my entities, for example. So this would apply for, I'm in my dev environment, I have a lot of regulations around my QA and prod environment, and I wanna make sure that everybody respects those regulations and does not change a lot of my underlying code outside of that environment. Now they can still make data changes, they can still make changes to the environment variables, and if, indeed they can actually make changes to some of the Canvas applications as well. But all in all, this is a package solution where, where uh, um, things like schema changes can't happen on the next version up. The unmanaged solution, solution is kind of cowboys and Indians. I want to package this up to move to my next dev environment, or I want to package this up for a customer perhaps, and they're going to have rights to make changes on my schema and all my you know, option set configurations and those kind of things. So that's an unmanaged solution. If you are in a proper application lifecycle management system, you'll likely make the, 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 the dev environment have be unmanaged, and QA and prod, 
from a Sarbanes-Oxley and a lot of the regulation sides will probably be managed solutions. So most of the major changes can't be done in, in QA and prod. Now, this also does make it more difficult for you to debug in some cases also. So if you have QA change, you're not going to be able to open up and sling code in many cases that you might be able to sling code in depth, which is, which is what you ideally might want. Also, if you're sending this to a customer, and if you want them to, to not allow them to make changes to that schema, then manage might make sense. If they paid you to do this, then manage might make sense. Unmanage might make sense. So it's, it's a real big decision that you want to make. Uh, but for going from a test in a production environment, I typically will do a managed solution because I want to test a pristine thing that nobody's going to change when I deploy this. All right, let's go ahead and hit export. Let me zoom out here. Now, this could take a few seconds here. And as we export this, this solution, and we'll cop over to an existing one in a moment, it's going to ask us a, uh, a, a few questions that you saw there. Now, mine's automatically opening this up right now, which is not what I want. Uh, but it went ahead and downloaded it, and we see it's, a, it's called a download file of webinar underscore one, the date, and then one, and it has a word managed at the end. And inside of here is a whole slew of like metadata pieces as well. But this is my zip file. There's my Canvas app right here. We're seeing the, the app MS app file right there. And we're, we're going to see our schemas inside of here as well. So let's go ahead and close this off. Now, one important note is my data did not come over with it. So my, my actual uh, CDS data does not come over with it. We'll cover how to do that at a later time also. So now that that's been exported, let's go ahead and go to another environment and try our import. So I'll go over to the Brian Knight's environment. Oh, one more piece I uh, forgot to mention here is let's imagine that I forgot to bring in a dependency of this. We can select the little, little ellipsis button here. We can then say add required components. And if anything's required for this, uh, it would then add that as well. Be careful here because sometimes it gets a little bit aggressive on what it considers required. But all in all, that's that. if you're missing dependencies, that's a quick way you can find the dependencies. If I start up by building a solution inside the solution, by building my, my, my application inside the solution with all my entities there, then likely you did not forget anything. This is going to occur when you add something as an existing entity, for example. It might miss something in that case. All right, so we've exported it. Let's now go back to importing now. So for importing, I, I picked a random environment here. I'll go to solutions. We'll then see our import option up top. The import option here, we'll, we'll select it. The first time you hit this in an environment, it might take a good 30 seconds to open up. So you'll also see, though, inside of here, the other solutions. And as I go into this, let me go and open up another, another make so we can kind of watch a few of these going at the same time. Again, this takes a little while the first time. I'm not sure what, what's going on behind the scenes here, what take, makes it take so long. But let me go to another another um, solution here just to show you an existing one. So I'll go to this back to back, make the power, um, make back to back to work one, which is our COVID solution. And I'll kind of keep this open for the time being. So I'm going to choose a file and we have under the, my downloads folder. Okay, I've got this webinar one we just created. I'll select that. I'll hit next. It's going to ask me a few questions. Do I want to see the solution details? You know, we can, we can see the solution with details, what's inside of it. Okay. Let me go ahead and close that out. And then we'll hit import. Now, the importing process could take a few minutes to do. This case is a really simple solution, not much to do. So it's going to, it's going to scream through this. But while it does this, let me go ahead and hop out here. Oh, it's actually going to happen faster than I thought it would happen. Um, let me hop out here and just show you a complete solution here. So this is a complete solution, the back to work COVID example, which you can find in the previous video I did. So a few things about this, which is kind of nice. I wanted to make things configurable for the companies that are installing this. First of all, you'll notice it's a managed solution, so people can't really do drastic changes to the code inside of here. But if I go to check in days here, I can make changes to my environment variables right here. The default value is seven, but this environment has it set to three now in this case. Uh, I can also go through, if I look at this entity right here, okay, we'll go open up this entity. And in this case, it'll take a few seconds. Notice I can't add fields, for example, or I can't go into this and actually look at the employee entity and make changes here. That's because it's a managed solution and I'm protecting it from being changed on the next step up in the environment. So it looks like now we're ready to go. Uh, now, I typically get this warning right here because the way I did it in this example, it's a little bit hard to explain what would happen to this in this case, but ultimately it's a label and it's for a translation warning that I don't really care about in this case. So I'm essentially, I'm deployed successfully. I got one little minor error that I didn't really worry about in this, in this solution that I would keep on debugging. And if I go back to this uh, solution again, 
will now see my webinar solutions deployed. I select it. Again, you can see it's managed right now. Um, and now everything's been deployed. So now that I've done that, you'll notice I cannot hit new. I cannot add. This is a package solution because it's managed. If it was unmanaged, we'd have the opportunity to also go through and add more stuff and, conf and configure it to, to change the schemas. This is for, per for, for moving something from dev to another dev environment, perhaps, or from my dev environment to a customer's dev environment. But in our case, we can go through and now our customers can go out to the application just like they normally do. There's my app that I did one minute ago. So they can keep on going just the way they would normally do it. They'd have no idea this is the managed solution. But back here under solutions and back to my webinar, um, we can we kind of kept things protected. Now, the other things to kind of keep in mind is I have that, that, that um, if I go to my webinar entity here, we're going to see that our prefixes are all proper prefixes here. So we can't uh, go in and actually change those prefixes. You'll see it had, actually the, the underlying name is WB underscore, and that's the publisher name that we chose. So there's lots more inside these solutions you can do. Uh, but these are a great way deploying applications. In brief, there's two ways of deploying the application. One is by importing a Canvas application right here that only works for Canvas applications. So we would go over here, we select this app, app, we hit export, and then we would go over here and hit import. That's the first way of doing it. We'll cover that in a second video also. The second way is with solutions, and solutions give you a better application lifecycle management system for doing things, integration things like DevOps, uh, Azure DevOps that is, and doing things like source control, but additionally, it gives you a more packaged way of migrating ob uh, objects from CDS and from Flow and applications from Dev to QA to Prod, as well as outside of your environment to another solution. You can see an existing solution I built in a previous video for our COVID workplace uh, safety video also, uh, where you kind of see how I built, how I kind of deployed that to your environment and packaged it up and ready to go and how we configured as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this, this beginner video on how to go ahead and package up a solution and deploy it to another environment. Uh, stay tuned and please do subscribe to us. Uh, you'll see the link down below, subscribe, as well as hit the bell to find out when we have other videos. We also love building applications for you as a company and training you on how to build uh, Power Apps also. You can find out more about that at, at pragmaticworks.com or hit the link down below as well for that. Have a great day and thanks for watching this video. Bye-bye.